Hi, I'm Tom and this is Ming. We're speed cubers, and that means in theory, we should be able to solve problems really quickly. And now we're turning our attention to some of the world's biggest problems with solutions you never saw coming. Because we are the, the Solve Guys. guys. Ciao. Today we have, geez, a very, very Australian and a very important issue to solve. Australian. This is worldwide. <laughs> Did you get my little Kachow reference there too? Lightning uh, McQueen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because today's problem that we're going to solve is bad driving, which I come to think of it has nothing to do with Lightning McQueen. Although he does ex exhibit some- I think he some... was the best driver. <laughs> yeah, well, wow, that's some real shade look, on Lightning McQueen. <laughs> agree to disagree. Uh, but we're, we're looking today at bad driving habits and yeah. annoying driving. You know, nothing that I do, but everything that all the drivers around Everyone me do. else is doing. Man, yeah. there are pet peeves that we're going to go through today, but more importantly, we're going to solve them and figure yeah. out how we can make the roads a safer place for you and me. And, you know, we have a very special guest today. Man, we do. When we think of bad drivers, who do we think of? <laughs> That's we, right. We think of this guy from across the world. We got the worst. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Cubehead Milan. Yo, Woo! yo, yeah, I'm a professional bad driver. <laughs> Very proud. So I, I, yeah, I know everything about this. So thanks for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, can you let the audience know a little bit about yourself and where, where in the world are you joining us from today? Yeah. So. Um, I'm known as Cupet. My real name is Milan Straf. Um, I'm from Belgium, so pretty far away. It's like midnight over here. Um, but yeah, I, I would say traffic in Belgium is pretty bad. So there are... Oh, yeah, I, I don't think people can actually drive over here. So <laughs> Do you guys actually have, have stuff cars? to share? So. It's not just bicycles or <laughs> yeah, something? Barely, barely. barely. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of bikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually have a lot of bikes. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Well, let's we'll we'll get into that. Um, this episode, like all the others in this season so far, is sponsored by Daily Puzzles. More about them later. Uh, but to get us kicked off, um, can you guys let me know what what is your number one pet peeve when it comes to drivers on the road? <sighs> anytime today. Yeah, anytime today. Yeah. I think the thing that annoys me the most is like when people don't have like any awareness of their surrounds. So I guess that's mm -hmm. kind of general, but then that would include people who, you know, are coming too close, not stopping quick enough or not yep. indicating when they change lanes, et cetera. Uh, not indicating. Yeah. You, you, you know, what's really annoying. Like, I don't know if it's the same over there because I don't know if traffic's like a lot different, but when you're just like driving and someone like opens their door wide and oh you're my just- Oh goodness. Wait, what? Yeah, like they- it never happens. It's no, like when, when really. cars are parked and just like they just like oh, throw okay. the but it's throw because, the door it's open because and then... head's going by on his bicycle. So that's <laughs> yeah. why that's why he notices it. <laughs> no, but it yeah. happens a lot over here. Usually when like let's say you, you park your car, right? Yeah. You check is someone coming behind me, you're like you barely open the door so you can squeeze through it, but other yeah, people yeah. just like throw the door open and you just like almost take the door yeah. with you and then Yeah, totally. That's, like, no, that's, that's something that annoys me a lot. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's like yeah. what Tom said. It's lack of just general spatial awareness. Yeah. The fact just, that there's stuff going yeah. on around you. It's not just you and your car. Like there's a lot that's going on around. Um, so we're not talking today about like, you know, stuff that unanimously is like illegal, you know, like speeding, uh, driving under the influence of alcohol. Like that's, you know, completely wrong on, <laughs> there's no way that it's ever right. Uh, Wait, we're talking it? about like pet peeves, like annoying drive <laughs> driver's habits today. So things, I mean, I guess failing to indicate like might be breaking some road rules, uh, but it's like, I don't know, it's just one of those annoying things. Did you hear Cuba goes, annoying. is it? He's like, is it illegal to drink and drive? <laughs> rules Wait, are what? different in, in Belgium. Damn. <laughs> we probably should have read up a little bit on like the, the Belgium like road rules, or the highway <laughs> code they have before road we actually rules? started. It's just a free for all. Wait, roads? Do you guys have roads? <laughs> all right. Belgium is just Grand Theft Auto in real different. life. It's just, it's just different. <laughs> It's so different. Um, so did a bit of research because, you know, you can take me out of teaching, but you can't take the teacher out of, of me. I don't know if I've mentioned it on the podcast before, but I, I used to used to be a teacher. Yeah. Uh, and I found an article by um, ubica.com.au. So this is in Australia, uh, listing the 12 most annoying driving habits. And I chose my top six. Uh, we'll see if any of these resonate with you guys. So number one um, is failing to indicate, which is what yeah. Tom mentioned before. It seems like drivers hate this when other drivers just don't indicate and all of a sudden they just change lanes. Yeah. Or you're expecting them to like turn 
uh, I'll, you know, go continue around the roundabout or something and suddenly they exit and yeah. you're like, yo, I was, I was counting on you not, uh, you know, exiting or whatever yeah. so that I could go, oh, whatever. Uh, the second most uh, annoying driving habit is undertaking. I actually didn't know it was called this. So undertaking apparently is when people refuse to let you um, like merge or overtake uh. when you attempt to do so. <laughs> have, you, have you experienced much of that? If you're trying to change lanes and you're sort of like hoping that someone gives you a gap or something and it just doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, that is annoying. Uh, especially like I, when people will, like maybe they're turning right, yep. but they're not turning right for like six kilometers and they're just like, no, I want to stay in the right lane. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know if it's oh, yeah, the yeah, same yeah. for you, but we have like kind of a courtesy where like the in most roads, like the the rightmost lanes are the overtaking lanes. People yep. who want to go fast and- yeah. And the right on the yeah. right side. Oh, do you guys drive on wait, the right? Do, do you, yeah, we drive on the right side yeah, of the road. That's but why. So, so it'll wait, be what? your left most then. Oh. Yeah. So wait, really? Do you get? We, we drive on the left. You, oh, it's it's like British. It's like British yeah. style. Yeah. yeah. Oh. The, the correct. Oh, okay, the correct okay. way. <laughs> no, 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 man. <laughs> it's actually that, that, that's great. actually We've like a different perspective today. Yeah, that's actually super dangerous. Like I, I sometimes imagine if I like visit England that you know. If you suddenly have to switch to the other side of the road, that, that's like, just like so dangerous. Yeah. Just like it's an entire different mindset. Yeah, especially. Scan, but yeah, we have this. We have the. Yeah, but we have the same thing. Like in our yeah, in our country, it's like the the fastest people, <laughs> the overtaking cars, are on the left side of the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's like super annoying when someone on the left side is like driving super slow. Yeah, because officially, if you pass them on the right side, in our case. It's it's uh you you can get fined for that. Yeah, you're doing you can't the overtake from the right, right side. Yeah, yeah, but you have to if they're going way too slow. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. All right. The third thing is is tailgating. I I, yeah. I that's probably number one for me. I, I don't know what it is. I I see myself as a pretty patient guy. I, I think I'm pretty calm. Not too much ruffles my feathers. <laughs> but tailgaters, I cannot stand it. I don't know what it is. Just the pressure of like looking in the rearview mirror and seeing someone really like close to me. And it's always like a massive Ford Ranger. <laughs> it's like these guys in big trucks and they're like- I just, I don't like it. Maybe they're just trying to be a friend. They just want to come up close and say hi. <laughs> it makes it makes me, it's probably, it pushes me the closest to road rage I think that I ever can get. Yeah. It makes me just want to like randomly just step on the brakes. Yeah, that's like and the like, intrusive thought, that'll right? that'll teach him. That'll teach him if they ram into my car. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's because gonna. That doesn't teach me a lesson either. <laughs> yeah, uh, because if if you if, if you suddenly break, it's their it's their, it's fault. their fault, right? It's their fault. Yeah. But yeah. Then my car's gonna get damaged. <laughs> Doesn't well, matter whose so. fault. No, it's it is like oh die, yeah, though. I have you now. It's like <laughs> yeah, you die. It's like yeah, I learned him a lesson now. <laughs> yeah, I taught I, that I, guy. I taught him, I taught right. him from heaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Take that. <clears throat> All right. So number four uh, with like. Annoying driving habits in Australia is entering the phone zone. So this is actually illegal in, in Australia. So like why did you make it sound so up, cool? I'm not sure. <laughs> entering why. the it's, phone wait, wait, zone. That's it's what the article wait, said. Entering the, entering the phone zone. What is that? It's just like using, using your, phone. your phone? Yeah, yeah. using your phone. Oh, okay. You're texting or just checking a message or something while you're driving. The thing that yeah. really gets me is uh, I think I'm pretty spoiled with this. Being in Australia was just like, super against the law. Yeah. Everyone just knows it's wrong. There are actually a bunch of places around the world where it's not illegal. Yeah. To use your phone while you're driving. I I have a bit of a bit of a feeling that our Belgium friend is gonna weigh in on this. Is it illegal to use no, your phone the, while driving where you are? Yes. 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 But I actually <laughs> have like a I actually have a pretty uh confession. Funny story about that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I have a confession to make. Okay. So, what, what's what's the number for the wait, police? Can I, we've got we've got the wait, Belgian wait. police right outside your door. Be careful <laughs> yeah. what you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Team so, is no, but right. actually, actually, that's the funny thing. So I I never do that. Like I never use my phone behind for the, the record, because it's dangerous. You my lawyer do it. wants me to say that I never do this, but <laughs> but but I drive a Tesla and I've like I use like autopilot now and then. And I was looking for a supercharger mm -hmm. with a KFC nearby. But I couldn't find it on my on my on my uh, car itself. Like I couldn't find where it was. So I, I drove to the right side of the road, calmed down, put on autopilot. I took my phone for five seconds, and it was like someone driving next to me, like right next to me, stopped. And I was like, I looked, 
why would you slow down and drive next to me? So I look out next to me and it was like a police. Oh. <laughs> it was like a, a motorcycle police. And I was like, oh no. So yeah, I had to stop. That's like the first time ever I was like in contact with the police because, you know, oh, wow. he, I, I was, you know, it, was a, it was my mistake, obviously, because you cannot do that, right? So yeah. I, I got to the side and I, and I explained the story. I was like, yeah, I, I was just looking for a supercharger with a KFC. <laughs> and she kind of had to laugh. <laughs> Yeah, she, she, she first said, like, oh, you're, you're getting fine. It was, like, 180 euros, which was a lot. It was, like, you know, what can I do? It's, like, yeah, I, I learned from gotta that. Get I shouldn't that do that. <laughs> but, you got to get the KFC. You've got to get the KFC. Yeah, but I, the funny thing is, so I, I explained that, and she started laughing, and I never got the fine. I never got it. Whoa. <laughs> I never received he it. He smooth-talked his way out of it. If, yeah, if she's, like, I'm gonna go if, to jail. If she's listening to this episode, <laughs> he's still waiting for the fine. So please feel free to send it for. Maybe she was a Cuba. She looked at. Yeah, she's like, maybe. wait, yo, are, are you Milan Stroop? Can you sign my motorbike? <laughs> are you Milan Stroop? <laughs> yeah, no. But that's actually the the only time I ever got in contact with like the police while I was in yeah, the car. Right. It was like I was like, that's so stupid. It was like stupidest thing ever. But yeah. It's always the one time you do something the one wrong. Time, yeah. yeah, that's right. All right, uh, there are two more. So um, the fifth thing on my list is sudden or late braking. Yeah, yeah. So there. Are, so this sudden braking that's super dangerous, right? Because all of a sudden the cars behind you're like, whoa. But also there are people who just brake really late. Like they'll wait to get they get pretty close to the car in front of them, and then it's just this like they think they can do it with like the little stopping distance. Yeah. But like think about the people behind you. Like it's 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 an issue. Uh, and the final thing on, on my list, on the list that I got from this website is being overly polite. So I'll read what it says. It says, what? there are situations where it's polite to allow another driver to cross an intersection or merge. However, if you're waving someone through out of turn, right, it could cause confusion and even result in accidents. Yeah. This is actually oh, I- one of the causes for like a recent accident that my wife was involved in. She's fine. Uh, the car wasn't too fine. Uh, but it was because and she wasn't in the wrong. Uh, someone else uh, involved waved someone else through when they shouldn't have. Yeah. And then that, that other person collided with, uh, with my wife's car. And it's like, yeah, people are just trying to be nice. And they're like, oh, no, no, you go, you go. But it's like, no, I can't go because firstly, I'm not supposed to. Like you are right away. But secondly, I don't actually know what happened. Like whether like the next lane, they'll stop for me. And, and, but, you know, some, they can be so aggressive about like, Go, go. I'm giving you a gap. Just go. <sighs> now, it can be really dangerous. I think, like, the important thing is, like, if everyone knows the rules, it, it's fine if you, like, you know, cohere to the rules and just be like, okay, yeah, you, you can go first now because, yeah. you know, that's how it goes. But if you let everyone pass when it's not, like, the way it goes and it can be really dangerous. Yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. It is, it is not safe. Yeah. Uh, here's something pretty fun. Apparently, according to uh, this survey from 9news.com.au, do you want to guess the percentage of Australians who rate themselves as a safe driver? So So people that think they're a good good safe driver. Surely, like, almost everyone. Surely, it has to be, like, a big chunk. Uh, It is 97% of Australians (laughs) who rate themselves as a safe driver. Yeah, right. (laughs) That's the biggest I, I, lie so I, I in heard, the entire world. It's like more like three <laughs> percent. Yeah, I heard like another. I heard another statistic, and that, that just like it's not logical at all. But it, it said like I think like ninety percent of people rate them like above average driver, yeah. which doesn't Sorry. make sense because obviously only fifty percent can be like above average. That's but. right, ninety percent above average. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is really famous quote by like uh, the late comedian George Carlin, and he said. Anybody driving slower than you is an idiot, and anyone going faster than you is a maniac. Yeah, <laughs> like only you are yeah, going at the correct, correct speed. Exactly. It's like it really is everything about driving is like the perspective, <laughs> yeah. right, of people. It's around so you. good. It's so good. So this is other survey uh, by done by Michelin North America, uh, and they found that the majority of Americans don't trust other drivers at all. Uh, but like uh, more than 80% remain supremely confident in their own abilities behind the wheels. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, something like, uh, what is it? Three out of four respondents said that they, that they definitely give driving advice if they're a passenger in someone else's <laughs> backseat driving. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's like the main problem, right? Everyone thinks they're right and everyone thinks they're good at driving. And then that's when the issues start occurring, right? Yeah. But, but I mean, if it's, 
In my case, it's actually true. Same, of course, me too. Yeah, yeah. because I actually am a better driver than everyone else. Wait, what? what, Can I can I ask what what you guys drive, or or should I guess what kind of cars you drive? Uh, sure. I mean, you're more like it's no Tesla. (laughs) No, it's a a Bugatti. You're right. No, it's it's a Bugatti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's probably like a Ferrari, (laughs) Bentley, probably Bentley Bentley, range. That's right. I mean, come on. Well, no, but do, do, which uh, car you, are we talking you, about? <laughs> yeah, I've got a right. big garage. We've got a few cars. I mean, come on. <laughs> but do you guys actually drive? Do you drive a lot? Like, yeah. Hmm. Are you guys a lot on the road? It was a one hour trip for me to get to um, this recording location. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Because that's like, that's like the thing in like where I'm from. And I think that it's like most of the parts of Europe. Usually when you drive, it's not like for long distances. Because if you... For example, America, if, if, if I think about like American driving, it's usually for like road trips of like yeah. a few hours, but that barely happens over here. Like there, yeah. there isn't a lot of times where I have to drive for an hour. Mm. Right. That's why I think like driving is kind of different right here than versus where you guys are from. Because usually oh, yeah. if you would go for a trip, it's like... It's so different. It's so different like from when... I mean, there are parts, parts of the world where, you know, listeners, like very few people, uh, you know, from a country where very few people own cars. And so it's like public transport everywhere. Uh, I grew up in Singapore where like um, driving is totally different there. It's just, yeah. you actually have to be a lot more aggressive in your driving. And apparently that's nothing compared to like other places in Southeast Asia where it's like, you can just assume no one's going to give way. No one is thinking about you. And so the only way you oh, get to man. change lanes or get, is like, you just go. Like yeah. traffic lights are there as like in some places as a, you know, suggestion, like road <laughs> rules lanes like markings on the road they're just like suggestions maybe maybe if you like it sure but otherwise if you want to yeah. go ahead do whatever you want it's fine it's a free yeah. for all I, I studied in i studied in italy naples and over there it's like it's almost dangerous over there to actually follow the rules because everyone yeah, is just wow. like freestyling their way through because like naples is one of the worst places i think probably after the the, the, one, the ones that i witnessed i think yeah. like the worst place i ever witnessed was uh egypt like Cairo, I don't know if you know it. That's like the worst driving ever. It's like yeah. I don't think any can, anything gets as bad as over there. <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, I, I, I've got to ask you this question. So road rage, right? That often happens as as a response to other people's bad driving. Have you guys ever ever <laughs> witnessed, ever experienced like road rage? To tell me, tell me some good road rage story. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah. The thing is, I'm actually a pretty like calm person i usually like control my emotions pretty well so i i I don't often get like super angry but i witnessed a lot of people get angry for like no reason there was like this one time as i said before it's like if you don't do not know the rules then you know i i i had permission to go and that guy thought he had like um how do you how do you say that if you if you think right away yeah, the, the person thought he had right of way, but I was I was 100% certain yeah. that I didn't. So I just yeah. like kept going and he started honking at me and it was like getting really mad. Yeah. So I honked back and, you know, the guy stepped out and he started like yelling well, at me, but I was like, you know car. what? Wow. Yeah. But I was like, you know, either you I stepped can just out of like, your car, you took your shirt off and he was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's like, you know, either either I can like start talking back and like discussing but i was like you know at that point like no one is really in the mood of like yeah admitting that they're wrong right yeah so it's like i just ignored it you're like i'd prefer not to spend tonight in a cell so like (laughs) let's just let's just go (laughs) but i think it you know it happens quite a lot actually over here that people get really mad but like fortunately i'm like no i would say like I, I haven't been in a lot of situations where I'm like, yep, where people wanted to fight me. No, me neither. That that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> I've never had someone step out of the car. That's that's okay, a little scary. Yeah. But I think the other week, like I got, um, I was going around a roundabout. So I actually technically did the wrong thing, like, but not oh, on purpose. Yep. Like I it's indicated, yeah, yeah. And then you know, like sometimes the auto the auto indicator turns off, yeah, yeah. Of and course. you don't realize because there's music playing. So I was like taking the third exit and the thing flipped off and so you know i went around oh, and the indicator no. turned off so like this guy was about to go and then, <laughs> i'm self-reporting but you know <laughs> i got the window wound down and a, oh. a bird flipped and oh, nice. a few beautiful australian insults yelled at me some nice 
some nice Aussie language that some we love. Nice flowery language. Well, I, I was I was actually in a roundabout the other day and I saw this young guy. Um, and, and he was really annoying. So I, I actually went down my window and, and gave him gave him the bird. <laughs> oh, wasn't was indicating. Was no. Oh, whoa, 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 no, no, no way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, more stats for you. Apparently around 72% of Australians have said that in the previous 12 months, they've had at least one driver shout, swear, or really <laughs> gesture at them. Definitely so in Australia. Yeah. It's so good. Now, it's some other um, like stats here. 27% of Australians believe that they, they're they less aggressive and, and they're driving if there's a passenger with them. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and then they ask drivers like, hey, would you drive any different if the car in front of you had like a baby on board sticker and only 20%, 22% oh. of drivers said they would. <laughs> what? So like four out of five drivers like, but it, nah. <laughs> screw the babies. <laughs> Who cares? That's oh, crazy. One out of five was like, also- yeah, okay, I might cut them some slack. It's kind of... It's kind of a weird question, though, right? That like, yeah. how how did eighty percent of people were like, nah, like, that, nah who cares? That's <laughs> kind of weird, isn't it? Baby needs to learn. And maybe some of them are thinking like <laughs> that that person should be taking even more care and be a better driver if they have a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. the only conclusion I can see. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, we've clearly shown that this is a problem. Yeah. And hey, you're not listening to the problem, guys. You're listening to the solve guys. So. Let's solve these problems. Oh, uh, yeah. First, a message from our sponsor. You know, when people look at Rubik's Cubes, they often think, oh, that's not for me. I mean, I'm sure you've got to be really good at maths or like really clever and stuff to solve it. But look at Tom. Like he solves Rubik's Cubes. Oh, yeah. Anyone can solve a Rubik's Cube. And now is actually the best time to start solving Rubik's Cubes and learning a new skill. There's heaps of videos online, tutorials that anyone can follow as a beginner or at any level to improve your growth. Our podcast today is sponsored by dailypuzzles.com.au who provided all these cubes that you see here as well. And man, do they have a selection. So of course, there's a normal three by three that I'm holding, but there's also the scoop. Bigger cubes like four by fours, five by fives. The this strange looking alien thing called the Megaminx that's shaped like a, a dodecahedron. Yeah, dodecahedron. Even puzzles like this, the Rubik's clock, the chi clock that aren't even cubes at all. That's right. They have fast international shipping. Uh, shipping to the US, for example, starts at just $5. It's it's actually crazy. There's always discounts. Daily Puzzles genuinely has some of the best customer service I've ever dealt with online. And if you want to get an extra 5% off your entire order or you, the new Rubik's Cube you're going to buy, what can we do, Ming? You can, at the checkout, type in Solve Guys and you're going to get that discount and also support this podcast. So start cubing. Solution number one is going to come from our very own Ming. Yeah, because we're saving the best for f- first, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. My solution has to do with the fact that it's just hard when you're in the car to communicate with other drivers. If you think about it, there are two ways as a driver that I can communicate with the surrounding cars. So it's using indicators or using the horn. Or stepping out of your car and yelling at them. <laughs> stepping out of the car, taking my shirt off yeah, and yeah, showing yeah. them who's boss. <laughs> Apart from that, I've only got those two things. That needs to be way more and so i've got a couple of suggestions for us today i hope you're listening to this car companies and transport departments of governments uh the first thing i think that cars should have is horn customization so hear me out we need a way firstly to be able to indicate which way i'm i'm beeping my horn sometimes right i want to just like you know slam my hand on that horn because of the guy to my left <laughs> and not the guy in front of me not yeah, the guy yeah, yeah, like yeah. and I need a way for them to know who my aggression is like going towards it may not be aggression sometimes like I'm trying to warn them it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, some, there's something happening there or maybe I want to tell the guy behind me to stop tailgating there needs to be a way that the horn can be like directional so there was this opinion piece that I found on um, socialmaharaj.com saying that there's already tech that's found in directional speakers. So these sort of sort of like um, omnidirectional speakers, but you can decide like, oh, it's actually only going to like push a sound out to like this 90 degree sector or something like that. Um, why don't yeah. we use that? Why don't we use that in horns? 
why didn't we use that in cars? We've had that for like quite a few years now. If I could horn and only the guy behind me hears it and no one else does. It's kind of like but when you- h- how, how would you aim to someone then? That would be like kind of a- <laughs> Do you need the controller, controller or? No, no, no. It's just, <laughs> I, 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 I was going to say, through. it's like Mario Kart where you get to choose, like, do you want to throw the shell in <laughs> yeah, front of you or right. behind you? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it gets mapped out onto your wheel, onto the steering wheel. <laughs> so depending on like where you like push on the steering wheel, oh, that's okay. where the sound comes out. Oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, that's actually a solution. <clears throat> yeah. or, or like the horn could be the made accompanied way. by a light. I don't know. Like if I, if I want to like do the guy behind. Then maybe only at the back of the car, like some bright light or something. <laughs> a really sharp beam hits them <laughs> in the eye and blinds beam them. Into the guy behind. <laughs> yeah, so you want to warn them and they're just like blinded so they crash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was. That's, I like the idea though. That could work. That's, that's my first one. Uh, so in 2017, YouTuber Mark Rober also made this video where he created like a nice car horn sound, right? So I think he figured out a way that like you press a horn. And it's a, instead of it just being this obnoxious, like, it just went like, beep, beep, like a really, really short. Yeah. And he used that, for example, like if you just want to tell the car in front of you, hey, hey, the lights have just gone mm. green. Like, I'm not being aggressive. I just want to give you a quick reminder that it's time to go. Oh, man. I hate that because I try and do that. Yeah. And so I like, I try and like just lightly. A short one, yeah. Short, two short taps. And then like you hit it too much and you're like, Bing! and you're like, oh, <laughs> damn it. I'm an oh, idiot. And man. then the guy steps out of the car again. <laughs> yeah. 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 But do Teslas no. not already have a horn customization? <gasps> do they? Oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I actually have a funny story about that because the other time I wanted to honk at someone, but like I customized my honk to actually sound like a fart. So I was actually mad at someone, so I wanted to honk, and it was just like a fart, and it was like, oh man, I was just so like, <laughs> and they hear that, it comes yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. car like that, right? But it was like, it was like, yeah, he kind of cut me off, and I was like, and I it's honked, like, and it was like a fart, and they were like, and I was like, oh no, I just, yeah. how is that legal? Did I just, did I just recommend something that can already be done? Yeah, but okay, I no, it, so is it legal? So the way it works like, is yes. like. It, they they changed the software so that if I honk right now, it's first the honk and then the fart. But it used to be just the fart, and that wasn't legal. <laughs> but right. like when when I'm parked, I can even yell at people through my like through a megaphone. Oh my <laughs> like god! Kind of funny. Okay. You're like got a full cop car. <laughs> it sounds like the solution is just get a Tesla. Yeah, Cubehead's <laughs> gonna be there. He's gonna be like. <laughs> These ultra light beams that are shining in the car's <laughs> eyes behind him, and he's got his megaphone. He's like, "Pull over, pull over!" <laughs> Fart noises and like sirens. That's right. This is Milan oh, so Stu speaking. Pull over the car. Okay, so that's customized, customizable horns. Uh, the second thing which I think cars need is a way to 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 emote at the cars yeah. around them. I, I like want that. car emotes. So. Here's what I'm thinking. What if there was a little like square screen, almost like the size of like, you know, that L plate or P plate sign that we have in Australia, <laughs> yeah. but it's a screen and it's on every side of the car and you can use it to show like simple emotes to neighboring cars, you know, simple messages. Yeah. Uh, again, we don't want a free for all here. Like we don't want like some scrolling LED banner, you know, <laughs> that's like stop tailgating. Like that's, that's way too distracting. We would need to regulate this. Or like, like El Bozo, when you overtake them, you just like <laughs> see right. a noob. Some, some swear words. Um, but <laughs> what if what if there was a way that you could just quickly like show a little emoji, right? Yeah. So like a little thumbs up, you know, the guy next to you like lets you through. And instead of like, I mean, there are different ways that people like say thanks, right? Yeah. Um, like uh, here in Australia, it's, a bit, it's customary to like, you know, just give a little wave to say thank you. Almost to a point that if someone doesn't wave, it's like, it's, I it's know, weird. right? Literally, if you, <clears throat> Milan, if you let someone in in Australia, like you're a nice person and they don't like lift the hand off the wheel a little bit to a wave, li- a little wave, you're like, idiot. You might say, <laughs> swear to yourself and you're like, I let no, you in and you betrayed me. This How is where you? Tom gets out yeah, of the yeah, car. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, that, that annoys me as well because I also, I always do it as well. It's like yeah. if someone lets you through, it's like, oh, thank you. And if someone doesn't do it for you, it's like, why, why, why did I even do this? <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have let that guy <laughs> in. <laughs> You just cut them off ahead. You just speed up. You're, like, yeah, you weren't, you're even, just weren't like, even thankful. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there are parts in the world where it's customary <laughs> to actually say thanks using like like flashing your headlights like really quick. Mm-hmm. Or some people even oh, like yeah, yeah. will just press like the hazard lights and use use their blinkers to like yeah, really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is that strictly speaking, that actually breaks like the law. Like, yeah. if, if a cop is there and really yeah, wanted yeah, yeah. to like, you're, you're not 
you're not actually meant to be using your lights for purposes other than, you know, like warning of an actual hazard or, you know, for visibility. So yeah, yeah if there was a way that this little screen could have, you know, a little thumbs up, little smiley face, or, or maybe a sad face, maybe a thumbs down, you know, <laughs> they didn't let you through and you're like, look, I'm not mad. I'm I just, feel like- I'm it, just disappointed. It, and it's just a little thumbs down. Yeah. It wouldn't be too hard to project it like actually just on the windscreens, right? Like <laughs> on their on, windscreens. On, no, no, on yours, <laughs> like right, like have that be like also oh, a, a screen eventually on, that projects on the windows. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, so on the wind on the windscreen. Oh yeah, cars in front of you, and then but, the back and side so windows. Good. So good. But would it be com- Would you be communicating like from back to f- <clears throat> wait, from to the back or to the front? <sighs> yeah, Surely I know. Surely the back and there's, sides. There's mostly. confusion there. Because you know, that's you like, that's like asking thing, about right? the horn. Like, how would you control where this is going? Like, you know, I want to show a thumbs up to the car I, you know, on my left, and it's like so confusing. That sounds like it's gonna be more th- dangerous. Th- yeah, I think there's a way to do it though, because like, like the modern cars right now can detect like vehicles around it, right? Oh yeah, sure. So if you have like, if if you have like two vehicles close, like near to each other, they can probably like connect with each other. Ooh. And if you can and just like automatically just happens. straight on, on, on the screen, just like send an, an emote, it would just like automatically send on their screen. Man, that would be like just like it. communicating with that's cars it. like nearby. What I think that's definitely possible. What if it's a smart car that's like, hey, do you want to say thanks to the car next to you who just yeah. let you through? Yes oh, or yeah. no. And then you but, just like on, on your you know steering wheel, just press yes or no. Like on your, on your heads up display, it's like, hey, yeah. would you like suggested responses? Suggested But emotes. that, you know... I, I, th- I think the problem with that is like I, d- I don't want to like ruin your fun right here, but I think like people like they probably want you to focus as much on the road as you possibly can, and they want <laughs> don't want you to like see- send emotes and memes yeah. to everyone around I you. Think so yeah, <laughs> otherwise it's going to become like a- in video games there's like proximity chat where like <laughs> yeah, when people come right. close to you, you can <laughs> chat with them. Yeah yeah and yeah exactly exactly. That hey, is what's up? One of the most toxic and terrible things in <laughs> video games ever. So oh man. That, uh, that would be so funny if you can actually just like, I know, like right? start this just voice chat. chat with everyone nearby. <laughs> just like they can hear you. But I, I think it actually would just like it would raise just like the road rage, and it would just <laughs> yeah, it, it would go through it. the roof. Yeah, it would just be insane. But it would be it would be so <clears throat> funny though. They can be like, oh, thanks, bro. And they're like, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. What, what are you doing for lunch later? <laughs> you want to hang out? <laughs> you could make a that lot of nice so friends. Funny. Like you could make a lot of friends. Uh, I also want to say that after independently coming up with this idea, I then decided to maybe Google it and realize that it's already been invented by so many companies. <laughs> I'm coming up with all these like novel ideas. And then you tell me like it's already been in Tesla's for like 50 million years. <laughs> and then like, so apparently there's these companies. One is called Mojipic and you can actually control like literally showing emojis using an app. There's one called Road Wave, Wave being W-A-Y-V-E. Um, by a Philadelphia based company called Mod. Um, <clears throat> it's a screen on the back of your car and it comes with built in messages like, I'm sorry, thank you, go around, turn off high beams and let me merge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me merge. Like, let me, lo- let me merge. Let me merge. <laughs> hey, merge, you loser. And move over, freak. <laughs> was yeah. the last one. And, and get out of your car. <laughs> <Yeah>. Fight me. <laughs> Fight me in real life, bro. <laughs> That's great. What's next? You're going to be like, oh, guys, I have this idea where we make the car electric. <laughs> Is that going to be your yeah, next solution? Right. <laughs> Ming's just recycle. Or or how about how about horses so you can just like talk to people? Yeah, you know what? Let's go horses. That's right. The ultimate renewable vehicle. For solution number two, we have the one and only, the housemate of Jeff the Cat. Uh, cube head. What is your solution for us today? So, you know, I've, I've been thinking about it, right? So I have two solutions. Mm-hmm. You know, one of them is like, I call the unrealistic solution. The other one is the realistic. Because like, the unrealistic unreal- solution is that everyone knows the regulations and the rules of the road. And no one is an a-hole. Let's call it that, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Because I- ideally, like the problem with road rage is obviously everyone thinks they're right. And sometimes you think you're right when you really aren't because you do not know the rules and stuff like that. So ideally, what everyone expects you to do is to know all the rules and just not be an a- uh, a-hole. Let's say it like <laughs> Sorry, that. Can I just clarify? So your solution to making everyone a better driver is for everyone to be a better driver. Just do it. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that that's the solution, right? Because <laughs> it feels like you've if you think about it. <laughs> How do you yeah, fix the problem? L- listen, Just have the problem fixed. I think that the problem is we cannot depend on you, humanity for this one. Okay. So, but, but wait, wait, wait. The solution comes here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Solution comes. We just wait a few more years and just like maybe like 50 years until the cars can just drive themselves and you don't have to worry about yeah. it. Wait, wait, wait. I know I, I know you think like, wait, that, that sounds stupid. But think, but think about it. We're constantly on the road, constantly yeah. have to focus, always have to have our eyes on the road, scan everything. Humans are not that good at that. And if, if you look at like programming and coding or anything software does, the, the good thing about the computer is that you can always focus and always keep repetitive tasks and do everything. So I really believe that eventually a car will be a better driver than a human. And if the car is driving, there's there's no way to be mad because you, you're not going to be mad at a car. You're like, stupid car, why did you do it? I know, because <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, it's not even a sentient at, being. At that car's AI. That's what you do. Yeah, then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm such an idiot. Did I just get mad at a car? I, I kind of want to, I think it's like a really interesting topic because like, especially over the last five years, even like the automatic driving, like the autopilot and the self-drive has really evolved in, in a crazy way. Mm. Like the full self-drive new software of like Tesla's are kind of like, in, in Belgium, it's really bad. But like America right now, some of the cars actually do a decent job of driving. And I think it will only improve over the coming few years. But yeah. So you're saying, what if we have vehicles that people don't have to drive, so we don't have to focus, and the vehicles do it for us, and then you can search for the nearest KFC? <laughs> and what, yeah, if we, yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah. if we made these vehicles really long, <laughs> and lots of people could fit on them, <laughs> right? Are you picking up my drift? No. <laughs> oh, man. It's almost you're, just you're a like public transport. At- no, 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 I think it's a good idea because I think public transport <laughs> no, no. is like way better than, than yeah, what, individual cars. What if we it's call like, them like a bus? Or, a bu- no, a train. What if we call them a train? <laughs> no, I Man. like the idea that it's really eventually, you know, that's driving is a job we don't need to focus on. We've got more important things, right? No, I, I, think, I think like the thing with public transport is like, especially that it's um, not really from location A to B. It's always like getting from A to B and from, you know, the public transport only goes like one way, right? So you mm-hmm. usually have to find your way through like two public transport starting points and end points. I think like that's why people will always prefer the car because like people are lazy and they don't want to do like the extra work. So they just like step in the car. Yeah. But, you know, especially in places, because I don't know, I do not know what it's like in Australia, but like if you have like really crowded places and there's a lot of traffic, usually public transport should be faster <laughs> still. Exactly, yeah. That's the experience I had going yeah. to um, this country called Japan. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell, actually, I actually went, more, to, I actually went more, to Japan, uh, if you guys Did didn't you? know. Wow. And, uh, first time hearing. I, I, think, I think the reason people don't like public transport is because there's not enough infrastructure for it. Yeah. And there's not enough infrastructure for it because people <laughs> aren't using it because they yeah. don't like it. So it's kind of yeah. this problem that at, at some point we have to I think someone, the government has to step in and like make it the thing for people yeah. to use for the environmental reasons and yeah, that's right. traffic reasons as well, right? Safety mm-hmm. as well. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, now, now I think of it, I think probably with the right infrastructure, public transport is probably the way to go. But like, I think like the main problem, especially here in Belgium is that the infrastructure is like really bad. And I think like like comparing it to other co- countries, I think like Belgium is still pretty decent, but it's just like so many countries that do it so like in such a bad yeah. way that it's... Yeah. Because like if, if, if I want to take the bus and I have to wait for like half an hour or like the bus is 20 minutes late, yeah, it's, it's like, like, yeah, you, you, it's that that's frustrating. Then then that that's road rage because then you get on the bus really angry and just like start being angry at everyone. You start beating up like <laughs> the grandma rage. in the back and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Bus yeah. rage. Like the driver. In there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He gets up. You think exactly. he's, he's trying to give the grandma his seat, but it's actually to beat her up. <laughs> it like, looks like Cuban's like going to move so she can sit down and he just tackles her oh, across the bus. Take down. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that happens. That can happen. So that's why I take the car because I know myself. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's for the good of, of all the old ladies out there. 
Can I say that's actually a really brilliant idea? Because I mean, it is actually like human error a lot, a lot of the time. Yeah. It's driver fatigue. It's driver distraction. So if you remove yeah. the element of the human, I mean, you yeah. are actually going to significantly going to improve safety. Yeah. Yeah. But I think like, especially like I, I was really thinking about it, like the fact that th- that might sound a bit crazy, but actually sometimes I'm surprised that we don't have that many people dying on the road. Because like I, I'm like I'm like in like a two thousand kilogram car constantly going like one twenty kilometers an hour yeah. next to like a hundred cars next to me, and I'm always thinking like if, if just like for half a second someone doesn't pay attention, I know. they crash That's into it. each other, and there's like there's like thousands of people constantly on the road, and like okay, once or twice or one a day something happens, but if you really take into consideration how many people have to focus constantly, it's actually I think we're doing a pretty good job actually. So we have to tap ourselves on the back, I think. <laughs> but, but not <laughs> crashing. But not too much. For because not we, still, we still want to make things better. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Solution number three comes from the infamous, the nefarious Tom himself. But wait, wait, you hear that sound? That's right. It is time for our weekly tradition, our head to head, where today history is going to be made. I just want to say that I'm feeling good about it. Well, don't get too ahead of yourself. You're not winning this week. But. This is what, take nine. Uh, I'm going to, as I try every single week, beat Tom at a Rubik's Cube 3x3 three three race. Uh, I mean, I'm not slow, but he is not slow either. We've got Cubehead is going to join in this week. I've already beat him, but yo, if you want to play along. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Wait, okay. at, wait actually, wait, wait, wait. I'm actually going to put on an extra light for this because I... I really want to win. Wow. Wait, just, I'm just like playing He's with my light. He's fixing his here. lighting because he knows okay, 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 he okay, has okay. zero chance. He's only saying that swing. so that if he yeah, loses, he can blame the light. You know, you need to have an out. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? I'm, I'm ready. No, no, ready, no, 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 yeah. no. No. Uh, no, no. Let's, <laughs> Give me my 15 <laughs> seconds of inspection. No excuse there. Okay. Here we go. Hands on the mat. Hands on the mat. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Yep. I mean. Oh, man. Oh mate, oh man. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, like, no. Oh man, I, I don't think you can even see my cue, but I messed up everything. Tom. My hands are like beat everyone. Oh, I didn't realize, I, but I hadn't turned the cue all day. My hands were just like slow motion, <laughs> <laughs> but I still got it. We'll take that. Man, I, I, I messed up. I messed up the cross because you. you I, I really wasn't ready to inspect it. You guys were like, oh, three, two, one, go. I was like, what the? Yeah, true. You only had like 20 seconds so, yeah. to inspect. We're it sorry. Really wasn't enough ahead. time. Yeah. No, I, you know, I, I used my inspection time to fix the light, okay? Okay, uh, sure, sure. sure. Okay, I'm, just yeah, yeah, I'm just making excuses. I'm just making excuses. I know. All right, you win this time, Tom. What is your solution for us this week? How can we solve the problem of bad drivers like, like yourself? <laughs> well... I was looking into this and thinking, you know, like we all think we're good drivers, Mm. but some of us have to own up and admit that you're not a good driver. You're a bad driver. Oh my goodness. Right. So that other people can, you know, avoid you, look out for you, maybe help you out if they're nice. And if they're not nice, just get the hell out of there, overtake you and, and move on. Right. Where are you going with this? And so first, um, there's a few problems with this. Like, so how do we determine if people are good or bad drivers? <laughs> okay. So I, I thought about this and I was like, well, people aren't going to own up to it, right? Because we've already seen that like 97% of people think they're a good driver, <laughs> yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. So no one's going to like voluntarily sign up for this program or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But I think we should bring in new plates. Yeah. Uh, we have L plates for learners. We have P plates for provisional license holders. Yep. And looking into this, I actually found out, uh, I did know this already, but I've forgotten. We also have R plates in Australia, which are- For well, really, really good drivers, <laughs> right? No, they're actually for, I'm not sure. I think maybe the R stands for road trauma, but it's oh, essentially yeah. for people who have road trauma uh-huh. from accidents or incidents and um, want to return to the road. But, you know, just have people- Give them a bit of leeway, look out for them, be careful, and it just lets other people know. Yeah. You know, that they're they're on the road with some I guess baggage, some some yep. possible worries, right? Yeah. So for countries who don't have this maybe plate system, 
in Australia, I, I think a lot too, but yeah. in Australia, it's literally like this sign that goes on the back and front of the car. A little square. That, with with yeah. the letter L for learner to yeah. indicate that, hey, this person's learning. They haven't got their full license yet. Or, or P, as Tom mentioned before, for provisional, which means like you've just gotten your license, but- uh, my, my P stands for you're, perfect driver. You're new. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. So what are, what are we proposing here, Tom? So I think that I'm we scared. need to bring a new plate, like a B, for B for bad driver, <laughs> right? So this is just going to let everyone else know around you that you're a bad driver. And like I said, <laughs> but people aren't going to want to put this on their car, but we need like law enforcement to enforce this. If you have had, I feel like if you've had a, um, like if you've done something, right, that you, you've taken the fault for, like yeah. you've crashed into someone, you've backed into someone, yep. you have caused an accident. Um, obviously, there's going to be cases where you will literally get your license taken away from you for that, right? Bad cases, go to jail, et cetera. But like when it's small, small incidents, yeah. if, you, if you get like, maybe you get three strikes, maybe it's, uh, you know, or, or s- some sort of quota there, but. Once that it's determined you're a bad driver, like you should have to put this B plate on for like <laughs> maybe oh, maybe man. three months, three the to six months. B plate, and and you're a B plater. You that <laughs> you just own it. That's who you are now. And people are going to be driving past, looking at you, laughing at you. But that's the shame man. and embarrassment you need to get over it and become a better driver. No, actually, I actually think no. Honestly, that would be I. I, I would I would think that's a great idea yeah. actually. Well, because of like course, yeah. <laughs> it's all it's it solves it solves a lot of things because like people will not want to have a B plate on their on their yep. car right so they're just gonna make sure that oh I have two strikes let's make sure I drive safe yeah yeah, yeah 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 hey, he's and not also wrong. and also like you know just just like let's give them to like as many people as possible because the people that have a B <laughs> plate they will be like oh man I'm gonna take the bus because I don't want to be driving around with my B <laughs> no you know human nature this is gonna end up being being like a badge of honor. A badge of honor with the B plate. If enough people get B plate, yeah, I'm a B plate. Like, Yo, hey, what? You don't have a B plate, you loser. What? Dude, what are you, a nerd? You don't even have a B plate. <laughs> this is my 10th B plate. You probably follow the road rules and that's lame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's true. <laughs> and then they'll like bling up their B plate. <laughs> like gold, like B plate. I think like some people, like if you drive a BMW, you don't need one. Like we already know. Yeah, we, you we know. know you're, you're a B plate. <laughs> they already like, have a B. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, or a Bugatti, you know, those sort of car, like yeah. 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 Tesla B drivers, player. Tesla drivers uh, probably can have the B plate like engraved. Oh man, they're the <laughs> worst. <laughs> but no, I think, I think this could, uh, you know, just be a good solution. The bad drivers own up to it and, um, you know, they need that sort of ridicule mm. to, to solve this problem that they have. Ah, thank you, Tom. So that's uh, my solution. Incredible. Yeah. You know, if incentives and just, you know, trying to promote good driver behavior doesn't work, we can always turn to shame and punishment, yeah. can't we? And I think actually maybe we even restrict them to like one lane. <laughs> like oh they God. have to stay in the left lane. Where <laughs> if you see a B players can't overtake, right? They're all just single file, like a line of convicts on the left side and we can just speed past, have this beautiful free yeah. open road on or, the right or, or side. Like in yeah. the car parks as well. Yeah, car parks. It's like, like the B players can only take the ones that are like extreme far away from, from the actual venue. Everyone else gets good yeah. parks. B players are fined if they park there, yeah. And, and, and we're allowed to throw tomatoes at the B players. <laughs> So just full on straight discrimination. That's, that's what <laughs> just that's your what LED your out. LED backplate says like see a B plate <laughs> on the back of the car as you pass them. Somewhere in the Department of Transportation, there is this focus group that's working on like innovation. Tons of money is going into it. They just needed to listen to this episode, and they would have been able to solve all of the problems on the road. Yeah. So I just want to say you're welcome. You're welcome, and if you're hiring. Uh, don't hire us I need a job really badly this podcast is not working out so <laughs> Department of Transport hit me up if you want the B plate to become a reality <laughs> it's patented please so don't use it uh, it's now time for us to solve a listener submitted question today's question comes from at Gene Machine G-H-E-E-N I know it was meant to be green but anyway Gene Machine <laughs> five, 4521 says the solve guys need to solve dog poop bags I hate dog poop bags because they really hurt the environment. They have to find a solution. 
guys, let, let's solve this real quick. In one minute, what's your solution to dog poop bags? Cube head, go. Uh, the solution is to not use poo bags and just like use your hands and then bring it with your hands to the bin. <laughs> Uh, That's I mean, the solution. He's not wrong. This is a bit of a shout out to episode <laughs> one where we solve toilet paper. <laughs> is this what you do with oh, Jeff? The same way? <laughs> is this how Jeff's kitty litter works? <laughs> That's right. Just scoops yeah, it with his no, hand. No, he, he, does, he, he doesn't have a kitty litter. <laughs> oh, like, wow. It's just everywhere. Wherever. It's and just like, your oh, really and I just get large Belgian hands. <laughs> grab it. Yeah, just cube hands. You no, know, ap- after a while, you start enjoying it. It's like the first few times, it's kind of like disgusting. Okay, after cool, a few man. times, you're like, oh, you know what? Well, maybe for a slightly more serious solution, there apparently are just a ton of biodegradable dog poop bags. And apparently it's not actually a, like a huge issue. I, I did a bit of research. There's also like reusable pooper scoopers. And oh, then yeah, yeah. apparently because it's dog poo, you can actually just bury it in your backyard. It's actually safer than human poo. Apparently you can just like literally flush it down the toilet. Uh, but I really thought that the ultimate solution is just get a cat. Honestly, I think that's a bigger problem because like you have to do the sand and you have to throw the sand away. Every time, I think that's worse than the than your the apartment bags. smells like litter all the time. Because, because, like technically speaking, if you're a cat lover, you have to change it every day. The sand, every day. The that's sand. just like if I, I don't like do that. Care Jeff, about, Jeff, yeah. <laughs> Jeff doesn't. Jeff, Jeff doesn't deserve that. But <laughs> no, like, definitely doesn't. If you like cared about your pet, you would. Yeah, like actually, I think like that's actually the real solution. Really, is just get a plant. Lose the dog. Yes. Get a, get a, get a plant. plant. Get a yeah. fish. Get a fish. Yeah. Get a fish bowl, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Cubehead, for joining us. If people want to find you, where can they go? Um, should I say my coordinates or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. You yeah. GPS what's your address? We'll pull up. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. You can find me on uh, YouTube, Cubehead or Cubeface. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much where I, uh, I will be online. I so, think if you want yeah, to, if you though, guys. stuff. It's- you don't it's have not, like, it's not worth to... checking out, but no, like you could if you wanted, if you're really bored or something. No, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to say I have this amazing video where I beat Tom in a battle, but I just remember that I you're, lost the battle. Yeah. So. You actually <laughs> I just lost, remember, yeah. yeah, I just remember right now. Damn. Yeah, don't check that. <laughs> check out that video. No, definitely not. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Belgium. So shout out to you for that. Uh, if you have questions that you want us to answer, leave us a comment. You can also email solveguys at tingman.com.au. Become one of us. Have your question featured here as well so that we can solve it. I think it's safe to say that uh, we've solved bad driving. There shouldn't be any more on the road after this. So get out there. Be safe. Drive safe. Uh, don't flip someone off if you don't have to. And stay inside your car generally as well. Let's just <laughs> keep it a cool space for everyone to just chill and drive together. So... I suppose you could say, Bing, problem solved. solved.